fishing thing. Let's let's do it. Um, so speaking of the local around my area, uh, shout out again to the Southwest Media because they just did an article on the drought. There is a big drought happening in the United States right now. Yes, and that's pretty much where, you know, that was the topic that I started with because I just keep thinking about how that is affecting the has how it's affecting the fish because we know there's low water levels everywhere and everything like that. And so anyways, shout out to them because they really went into the details about like how to be safe in the heat because the heat is why there's such a drought. Um, there's just this long stretch of heat that's happening uh, across a lot of the country. So anyways, it was just a good reminder, you know, make sure to drink water, make sure to get in the shade make sure to not stay out too long. Do those things as fishers, you, you know, as, as people out there fishing, you have to, you know, be aware of that sort of shit um, and be aware of the weather. Right. So yep. I just wanted to, you know, put a little public service announcement at the top of this topic because, man, that shit can get you for real. Yeah. Heat is no joke, and dehydration dehydration can sneak up on you. Like, uh, you should never let it get to the point where you stop sweating. But if it's 90 degrees and humid and you aren't sweating anymore, you need to find something to drink quick. Unless yeah. you're just one of those crazy people that can, like, wear a sweatshirt and this shit. I don't know what's wrong with you, but. <laughs> I guess. Dude, I've seen <laughs> the lawn people do it. I'm just like. Yeah. They're, they're mowing the lawn on Wednesday and I like go and pull or Thursday or whatever the fuck day is. I don't know. Right. I don't know when they mow the lawn, but like, um, I, I did. anyway, it's, the it's, point that I'm trying to make is like, they're out there on the lawn mowers. It's a hundred degrees outside and they're in like full gear. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I see some, legit. I get staying covered from the sun, but like they're wearing yeah. black hoodies. <laughs> right. I know. And I don't know. It's like some people don't know that like the heat escapes from your head. Like, so don't put a cap on. I see people still, like, for the fashion, like, wearing a cap and stuff. Like, what are you doing? I also saw a guy wearing a hoodie, but he lifted up the bottom and, like, took his arms out. So he was, like, wearing no shirt, but he still had the hood on. And I'm like, that's the worst part to keep on. What are you doing? Yeah, but there's, like, those desert, like, the uh, Arabian Peninsula, a lot of people wear hoods, but they're also like breezy. They're breathable. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, normally hoodies are not right, breathable. Yeah. The, right. Those are like thin. So they let the air pass through. Right. And you just protect from the sun, but you can yeah. still feel the air. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. Hey, I don't know. Mm. Anyways. Yeah. We're definitely not equipped for that. We are warm blooded people. We don't know. We can't, we can't wrap our heads around that. I would so, have a t-shirt. All the time. <laughs> All, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so uh anyways, to the to the drought. Let's let's talk about the drought. How um have you been to the river lately? Because our river, like I live near the Minnesota River. You know, I mean, like the Minnesota River runs through Chaska. I live in Chaska. So the Minnesota River is like fucking crazy low right now. And pretty much all of the bodies of water in general are yeah. really low in this area, you know, in southern mid part of mm -hmm. the state. Have you been to your river cuz I know you fish the river. Yeah, the, 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 Missis the Mississippi, the I don't I haven't been to um we also got the uh shoot, I can't think of it right now. It doesn't matter. I'll come back to it if I think of it. But there's okay. a smaller river that I used to live mm -hmm. like right on Okay. And that one's already shallow. So I don't think there's even any water in there. I don't know what it looks like, like one little stream. I don't know. But I'm no sure shit. there's I'm sure there's points that have like some water, but that river was never that deep to begin with. And I've never seen personally, since I've lived in St. Cloud, I've never seen the Mississippi this low. Really? Yeah. And you've been so. there for a, a minute, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Shit. Yeah, you can like just go down and like walk it. Like, I mean, there's still water. Wow. Like, you can't walk everything, but like where there's points that you used to have to try to navigate through and find your mm -hmm. way to the river because mm -hmm. you couldn't get down there. Now you can just walk to the bottom and like the first yeah. couple of feet are like all rocks and stuff. Damn. Just go wherever you want, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, dude. That's yeah, it's crazy. nuts. Mm -hmm. Have you been so, able to fish it or like? I guess I, generally speaking, like what is, I what is the fishing now? <laughs> yeah, so I haven't fished it for a while, but the one of the points that I fish a lot, mm -hmm. um, that one's always pretty deep. 
Like that one's oh, above okay. that one's above the dam. And mm-hmm. the water above the dam is relatively deep. Like that's where you see a lot of boat traffic and stuff at the bottom of sure. the dam. Yeah. That water is so low. Wow. So like the water above the dam is low, but it's not yeah, the dam's still doing its job and packing up water. Right, is right, what you're right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that's sort of actually that's a really that that's a tip when it comes to the river fishing. Like mm-hmm. I didn't even think about it. It wasn't my setup or anything like that. But like that's how I took it. Is like go and fish. Like if you can find a dam in the river, if it's low, just start walking up the river. Follow the opposite of the flow. Walk up the river and go find yeah. the fucking dam. See if you can, because yeah. likely there's still water above the dam. Yeah. There's almost, I think there's always water above the dam unless it gets real bad. I mean, if it gets to the point right, where yeah, there's not like, that's terrible, but, um, <laughs> right. like, well, there could always be the, they get so bad. They just open the, like yeah. open it and let it flow natural. Too, there's so. water below the dam too, because where the dam comes out, like a lot of fish will congregate to there. So it's almost like more concentrated because mm-hmm. as the water comes in, like they're mm-hmm. forced to be in one spot. And naturally, especially in rivers, when the water gets low, most of the fish, there's still some stupid ones, just like there's whales that get beached. Like you have a whole ocean. How did you fucking pull this off? But the the water gets like um, it goes out and the fish just naturally know, like, I don't want to get stranded. So they head for Mm -hmm. deeper water in the rivers. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's when it happens at a faster rate. Like if, if like tidal waters or like, t- you know, yeah, I was just going to say like the hundred, when we were talking about the hundred lakes, uh, the hundred lakes from Bassmaster or not Bassmaster, that's the tournament. Uh, when we were talking about BASS and their hundred top lakes, you where there were tidal lakes in there. And that's what you were saying is like fish will follow the tide. This isn't a tidal situation. I mean, this is months and months of no rain right right weeks yep. and weeks i guess yeah whatever yep but in that same regard because you know that it is low if you do end up getting rain a lot of times the fish know that like there's a lot of stuff that's just waiting to get washed into the water okay. so when it rains they'll swim up to the shallow points in the rivers oh. and they'll try to feed on what's getting washed in bugs or you know mm-hmm. whatever critters mm-hmm. yep. that are small enough for them to eat yeah i was gonna say i've been seeing a lot of mice like people be fishing mice yeah there's mice lures there's mice topwater lures really yeah with the tail and everything there's some real gnarly like colored ones too they're like some people mean? there's different like companies mice that are brown or gray <laughs> i know right and that's like the same thing with like fishing lures like there's no fish that we fish around here that are bright colors but you can still get that are purple colors. and chartreuse right <laughs> yeah and there's i've seen like purple mice with like chartreuse tails because they have no big shit. long jointed tails so the rat like swims and then the tail mm-hmm. wiggles with it so it's just okay it's gnarly. I've never fished one of those before, but they have a bunch of different weird top waters. You can get spiders and baby ducks and all sorts really? of shit. Mm-hmm. Wow. I suppose baby ducks, muskies, huh? Probably go nuts for the baby ducks. Baby ducks, pikes eat baby ducks a lot. Pike? Wow. You can find, yeah, muskies probably do, but they're not as aggressive as pikes. So people don't oh, okay. see it as much. Sure, sure. Like you can. I don't know if they actually eat them, but there's like quite a few different uh, baby loon colored musky lures. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know if they actually eat baby loons, but right. the biggest bass I ever caught or the biggest musky I ever caught was after it ate a two pound bass. So, I mean, they can handle eating <laughs> a big fish. So, so they can really get mm-hmm. after it. <laughs> That's a really good point. So with actually funny enough, uh, our, our intro video, like our, when we started this, you know, a year and some change ago, um, you were filming and a front moved in and it started to rain on you. And so like in the intro video, you're filming in the rain, you're talking about yeah. real AF TV in the rain. And that was a nice, that was a nice rain. Like it was coming. You down. knew you weren't in danger. There wasn't really like a lot of lightning from, from the video. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, was, I don't know what it was, but like, yeah, you got would it. you recommend people in Low level situations like we're in right now, low water situations like we're in right now, is it good to just, hey, there's a rainstorm coming, like 
get your shit ready and go hit top water? Would you do that? Well, yeah, you can fish stuff in top water, but sometimes it's kind of hard to fish top water baits unless they're big and they're making a lot of movement because when it's raining hard, there's so much movement on the surface, it's hard for the fish to find the bait. Oh. It's the same reason that you don't fish a top water when there's heavy wind because they can't really see it. There's too much movement. So the, the movement of the bait is kind of drowned out or camouflaged even, if you want to say, yes. by the movement of the water. Yep, that's a perfect mm. way to put it. Not saying that you can't catch fish, but like when the water's calm, they can hone yeah. in on it from a lot farther away, you know? Right, right. And the noise that it's making and the splashing, like it gets their attention. When there's rain, it, it, there's splashing all over the surface. That's all that's happening. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the best way to put it <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's all that's happening yeah but you can you can go out and catch fish in the rain i've fished in the rain like it never stopped me before but i don't screw with lightning <laughs> but it was one of right, those nice yeah don't like, don't screw yeah. with lightning like that was like the yeah. first thing i ever learned with a boat is just mm-hmm. like yeah you know, it's raining it, yeah we'll be okay but watch the horizon if you start seeing or if you hear thunder right <laughs> Right. That's the, yeah. Get the fuck off the lake. Yeah. Dude. Cause there's not lightning with every storm, but there is the potential. So like it's not necessarily safe. So like that's on you, you know. What for sure. You for sure. you make that decision. But I'm I always fish when it rains. Like if you have the gear, if you can put on a raincoat or whatever. Like if it's not yeah. lightning, oh. I'll fish. Mm-hmm. But if it's lightning, no way, dude. I'm out no. of there. I'm not Get messing out with that. There at all no, no. but yeah this um i wanted to say too before we like get off of rivers and stuff mm-hmm. not necessarily a point for fishing them but a point for down the road and kind of fishing them too because you can see the structure okay. when the water's higher there's a lot of like in the bigger rivers there are rocks and the mm-hmm. different structure that you can't see when the water's higher so mm-hmm. when the water goes lower you can kind of tell where stuff is because of where the current, how the current's moving. So you're like, okay, like I know that there's something there that's breaking the current and you know, whatnot. But if you see all the different rocks and stuff now, mm-hmm. you can even take pictures for later oh. on. Like when the water oh. gets higher, if you fish the same areas a lot, yeah. if yeah. you can get a map of like those giant rocks aren't moving. So right, they're gonna right, be right. there. Even <laughs> even when the floods come in the spring, say if there are floodwaters in the spring, like we have a really good winter, like those rocks are huge, dude. They're mm-hmm. locked in. Sure, yeah, sure. For sure. Those big rocks mm-hmm. are not moving. And a lot of fish like to sit behind the current breaks and wait. I should say smallmouth bass. I don't know a lot of okay. yeah. other stuff on the river so i'm mainly mm-hmm. talking smallmouth here because that's what i know that's what i go and fish the river for so sure but they'll sit behind that current break which is the rock you know the current goes past it and they can sit right behind it and not have to exert a lot of force but the smaller stuff sure. if it gets in the current it has no choice but to go with it so they'll just sit there mm-hmm. waiting for something to pass by right and if you know where those rocks are and you can put them like there are certain spots that I know that have rocks on the river where I can literally go. If somebody hasn't been here recently, there's a fish behind that rock and I will catch it right now <laughs> and like cast in and like pull that fish out. And it might not be the first cast. It's almost it. like a bet situation where you take yeah. somebody with you and you're like, I bet I can catch a fish. Yeah, but I can like, catch yeah, a right. Fish. I got five bucks as you can. I yeah. go, yeah. Oh, watch hey, this. You watch, boy. There's a fish right behind that rock and I'm about to pull it out. Unless you want to bet your truck, put your pink slip on the line. <laughs> but it might not be it might not be the first cast, you know, because temperamental smallmouths are like very on and off. But if they're oh, okay. hiding in their current break, there's a decent chance they're waiting for some food. Mm-hmm. Or right. at the very least, an easy meal is going to get them to go. But you might have to try right. a couple different things. But for the most part, like if you can just put a bait in front of them, they're they're going to hammer it. So nice, nice, but yeah, charting it out is such an awesome way to have an advantage over other anglers where, yeah, dude, they're out there fishing and you're just like, I know there's a rock there and there and there. And, Mm -hmm. and even now, like if the water's slightly deep enough and you're just seeing the peak of the rock, like, you know, Mm -hmm. exactly where there are 
you know, I can see you like you can cast mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. behind all those rocks, even if they're small where you didn't see current breaks before because the water was high enough. You were only seeing the big rock. You weren't seeing the small rock. They could oh, still be there. Right. Good. Yeah. Hell shit, dude. Good tip. Good. I never even <laughs> thought about that just generally speaking, but I have like, as I see the pictures of the low waters, I do, I do see all this exposed rock. Um, mm-hmm. Of course they're rivers. Right. And yep. it's just like, it, it makes so much sense when you hear, when I hear you say it. And then I think about a picture in my head or I think about the river actually, you know, cause I've driven over the river a hundred times now when it's been low and I look at it and I can just picture in my head. I'm like, Oh damn dude. Like that right there is an advantage. Like that's an advantage as in like advantage me when the water comes back. (laughs) Yep. Yep. That's crazy. Being able to see their habitat is a huge advantage. I mean, we have depth finders to find that stuff. Sure. When the water is low and you can just map it out. So, you know, cause a lot of that stuff, you're not trying to fish in a boat, you know? Well, that's what I was just going to say actually is a lot of river fishing. I don't, for me and you specifically, like, and the where where we can go fish the the river fairly easily, yeah. you just you just drive up, and then you grab your rod, your tackle, and you get out and you just walk over there and you just start throwing. Yep. And it's it's done from the shore. I mean, yeah, you can put a boat in there. You could. Yeah. Fine, but like you don't have to. No. There's some and, real good shore fishing. Yeah, and where I'm talking about fishing, like above the dam. I see boats below the dam. I've only seen kayaks because there's mm. mm-hmm. there's a lot of spots that get too shallow. Like you just don't have enough room. Like you could have a boat in certain spots and then you get to sure. a certain spot and you're stuck. So you only have a limited amount of space and like nobody tries to play with the Mississippi, man. There's way <laughs> too many big rocks in, <laughs> on that side of it. Like for there's, sure, for there's sure. like known spots where you're like, I can handle a boat here, even though I might hit a tree or two. Cause there's always giant logs coming down the river, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't mess. I, if, if I get a boat nice enough, I don't think I'll ever drive on the river still. Yeah. I might yeah. try it in the little thing I got now mm-hmm. where at any point in time I could just pull it off to the side and just pull it on shore. Right. But no yeah. way. I don't trust Not rivers. No actual boat. Yeah. No. They're scary, dude. Um, let's get into some boring stuff and see if we can make it not boring. <laughs> All right. Uh, mostly, I I want to still talk. I like We're going to keep talking fishing, of course. Duh, this is a fishing podcast. That's what we do. But the current drought, and it just goes back again to like, you have to be an amateur meteorologist to be a good fisherman. And this is all from Noah. All this information that I'm about to drop is from Noah. And Knowing this stuff, it, it applies directly to what you were just talking about when it comes to the river being low. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's something that you follow so that you kind of do have an idea of what you're getting into. Thirty six percent of the United States is in a severe or s- extreme drought as of June. We're almost in August now and we haven't had any rain. So holy shit, 40 Seven percent of the contiguous U.S. state is in a moderate or extreme. So that is the lower 48, 47 percent, almost half of our country right now, dude. I don't know if you have the dock up or not, but the map of this drought that came from NOAA is insane. And by the way, that's N-O-A-A, NOAA, the weather service. It is from western Texas all the way over to California, all the way north, all the way to Maine. Like it literally is the entire north, the entire west, Mm -hmm. and from west over to Texas and even like decent, well, up to the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, basically. Like there's so much lack, I guess, (laughs) of rain that you can't even it has to be 50 percent by now because this was in june that they were reporting 47 percent of the lower 48 that was in a this is this is literally from moderate to extreme drought yeah are you seeing the are you seeing the map tim yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm looking at right now like we're in 
yeah. the light orange and everything is like super crispy around here. Uh, yeah. So can you think of like what Nevada and Utah and stuff are no. going through right now? Like, look how bad. Explain I mean, that big heavy dot right now in the like West Central. Where is that? Like, it, so it's like Nevada. I can't make it any bigger. It's oh. like it's like Nevada into it's like the middle of the middle and north of California has a chunk of the deep red. Oh yeah, yeah, good and point. Nevada, and then I don't like the whole Southwest almost in a way, isn't it? Yeah, it's like everything over to Texas. It's all. Like there's blotchy. It looks like a weird camo. It does because there's. It's just like all shades of like red and stuff. But it's uh, yeah, almost, it's like different shades of red in the southwest. You're do, right, and yeah. and we're in the yellow, and we're talking about how bad it is here. And yeah, they're like all weird shades of red. It's like holy shit, dude. And we were just talking about how good efficient there is in California. And now I'm kind of going like, oh, damn, dude, right. what is happening over there? I did not go into that detail in the research because, you know, I was just, we're just talking about low fishing and the drought itself. But like, yeah, whew. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's gnarly. Uh, like they're all like deserty states anyways. So I don't know how bad a drought like really changes it for them. Like I'm not right. trying to be like, uh, it doesn't no, matter. No, no, but, I understand. But it's like half of Nevada, Utah, and Arizona are like half are in the, what does it say, exceptional drought? Uh, exceptional yeah. drought. Yeah, which is past extreme. Past extreme. extreme. <laughs> past extreme. <laughs> and then like, so like all of California is in at least extreme almost. Right. Yeah. Same and with that... the same. Oh, Utah is completely. Utah is all exceptional with a sprinkle of extreme. Yeah. That's yeah. so gnarly. That's so crazy. And Utah's fairly like a weirdly dry state, I think, for you know, I mean they have mountains and stuff, they get a lot of snow, but right. Um that part of California, that northern part uh, that you pointed out, you're like, "Hey, even northern California, it's like, dude, is that That's the section we were talking about in the episode with uh the Bass Top 100 Lakes, it seems like. It was like right, right around that area, that delta, and it's like, "Holy shit." Yeah, um, for sure. That's that's crazy. Yeah, man. I just so seventy two percent of minutes. This is from the Associated Press it says seventy two percent of Minnesota in is is in a severe drought. Did you hear that Gooseberry Falls basically dried, like dried up? up? Yeah, yeah. It's like a yeah. trickle, and they actually like the guy that was being interviewed. He um from it was actually the AP, and then they quoted the Star Tribune, the local uh, paper here in Minnesota. Uh, he basically was just like, yeah, that thing's going to dry up in August if we don't get any rain. It's like, oh, shit, man. That is a waterfall destination location here in the United States, here right. in the state of Minnesota. Yeah, that's insane. Whoa. There's like, hey, we might lose a waterfall. What? Yeah. I didn't know. It's, it's going to be crazy. I didn't know that like it wouldn't come back. Don't you think? No, it'll come that, back. I well, mean, we just have to gonna, wait for all oh, of so the, we just yeah, might yeah. lose it completely, which is whatever. I guess I don't care. Like, as long as it's not <laughs> killing the fish and stuff. Well, that's the thing is like, I mean, not not in this particular waterfall because there ain't no salmon jumping yeah. over Gooseberry Falls. It's too big. But like, that was another thing that when I looked it up, those migratory fish, man, they're getting fucked. Like the salmon, the brook trout, all these things like yeah. that are hurting because these low just what we started with talking about these low rivers, man, mm -hmm. are, they're going to fuck up these migratory well, those, fish. So yeah, bad. Yeah. And those are more cold weather fish too. Like they don't like the warm water. Mm. So when you got like shallow water with these temperatures, like there is no real cold water. So mm. that can, mm -hmm. that can be a real, real problem for those fish too. And there's like, there's, so there's other tips too for like when you're handling fish like that. Where, what do you mean fish like that? Uh, well, fish like that, that like the colder water, but like really oh. all fish at this point in time, eh, most of them can handle it. Like, especially when you're like talking about lakes and stuff, mm -hmm. but the fish that are really affected by droughts and stuff, when you're catching them, 
they say that like you should have your hands wet like you shouldn't be like oh. you know messing with them because they most of them have like a protective like slime on them sure and if they're already like i mean even down to the bluegills right like you catch yeah. a bluegill and yeah it's not not slimy right and it's not gross said, like a yeah. pike or anything like yeah. that. yeah and that's why i said most because like walleye don't really have much of a slime but they might but their okay. scales are like rougher so i don't know about all fish but i know that like pike have a massive amount of slime and it's gross they don't smell good <laughs> it's just like you catch red, a big red, red. one and it's just dripping off of them and you're trying to like <laughs> smile for your photo but you're like oh dude that is the slime running down your hand yeah you just reek. see it like dripping off the tail and you're just like hey, oh, i don't want to hold this over the boat <laughs> <laughs> But so you're what you're saying is just kind of a generalization of like fish are highly affected by this. Obviously, Mm -hmm. there's low water levels. It's hot. Low water levels leads to like no cold water sections in some Mm -hmm. places. So there's like a handling procedure. And what what were you getting? Yeah. Yeah. So I I mean, basically, it's just like when you're catching a fish like they're like, you know, try to reduce the stress on them. So they're like, you know have your hands already wet like don't go in with dry hands like taking mm-hmm. away from the moisture and the slime that they already have or whatever cuz mm-hmm. we i mean we call it slime i'm sure it's called some sort of like a it's called slime yeah yeah slime you slimy fucks but <laughs> the um the other thing that i thought was funny cuz i have seen it before where they're like oh yeah try to minimize the fight time like Oh, like, the, mm. have you people ever fished before? Like, mm-hmm. I'm just like, all right, Oof, and just swinging in the boat. Like, <laughs> I just had to get them in fast. Like, that's not how it works. Right. That's not. Your, your that's goal the only thing to, you're trying to do when yeah, you're fishing is your trying to get is it to in try as to, fast as possible. Yes, exactly. I'm not just sitting there waiting for him to just like, oh, maybe he'll jump again. Like, get right. him in the boat. Like, because fighting a fish is fun. Don't get me wrong. Like, that's part of the sure. uh, that's lure the of it. But landing a fish is so much better than fighting it. If I fight it for a while and it gets off, you're just like, damn it. Right. You get pissed more than. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even when people are, um, I watch a lot of ocean fishing on, uh, you know, I, I just watch a lot of ocean fishing. It's like that takes forever. It takes a long time to land a fish in the ocean. It, it takes a long time to land a fish that muscular that yeah. big that is meant to swim forever dude they drive backwards with those giant boats so they don't get spooled like what? i didn't know, even i haven't i've watched so much deep sea fishing how the fuck some, did I yeah that some up? of those big giant fish like they drive backwards with the boats once they get one on because they're trying to like minimize the amount of space that he runs they're trying to keep the distance between him and or her whatever the fish the fish and yeah the fishermen as wow. little as possible yeah that's crazy dude uh-huh and they're just like oh just minimize the time like okay like, <laughs> I, <laughs> like yeah what, what do you mean of course yeah. that's the only thing anglers try to do <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i don't know that's a weird thing to say i know um i don't know who's out there just like mm, watch this i'm gonna let it run right right <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> You want to see something? I mean, crazy? I get it if you like. <laughs> just yeah, I get it if you're like pan oh. fishing, and then all of a sudden you 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 snag or you're pan fishing, and um, a muskie decides like that's a pretty good size sunny, bam. Uh, you know, but like you're still trying to land it as fast as possible. It's right. Not- yeah, you're trying to land that muskie as fast as possible, but also like at that point, you know, like. Your initial one was like, I'm trying to keep the sunny alive. Well, that didn't go so well. So now <laughs> <laughs> let's do our best to land this muskie and release him properly. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so do you know, I mean, yeah, you gave good tips about like hand, like get your hands wet already and, you know, try to minimize their time out of the water, uh, which most you should try to just do that anyway. I think that's just good handling just fish handling practice anyway yep but um is it when it comes down to something like landing a a muskie or something like that like is there is it sort of like 
you should use a net too to try to get it out of the water. You know, is there anything else that I'm just like not thinking of being the non fisherman? So like, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, by the way. I'm literally yeah. just like asking a question I'm super curious no, about because I don't know all of the methods. Yeah, no, like the best method with like a, a bigger fish. Um, and really, honestly, if you're trying to do it with all fish is if you had a net big enough to scoop them in the net, but don't even lift them out of the water. Just leave. Oh, so they're like contained in the net, but then they're still in the water. So then you're like really minimizing the amount of time that they spend out of the water. Right. Like bass fishing, you can kind of like you pull them in, you just pop the hook out and you can toss them back in. But mm -hmm. if it's a nice big one, you know, net them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're in a tournament, there's certain tournaments that you can't use nets. So that's a different story. But sure, sure. Uh, you know, net them, net them if you can and just try to keep them in the water because that helps a lot. Even with muskies for a while there, they were like, oh, try to use a cradle. And a cradle is like, oh, uh, Almost. Um, let me maybe take a swing at this. Is this sort of the thing that they use for, I would, I, because if you've listened to our Dreamfish episode, I see them with sturgeon all of the time. Like, dude, they oh. lift dolphins out of tanks and shit. With this. Yeah. Is that dude. what it is? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a small <laughs> okay. version of it. I was just going to yeah. say that it's what they move free willy in. <laughs> <laughs> that's the reference that everybody's going to understand <laughs> that's the goal of real af tv right there so yeah. say make it so everybody can understand and go out right. and do this shit <laughs> the free willy reference nice one <laughs> so yeah like it uh, that's one of the things but i heard that those aren't necessarily the greatest for the fish because they can like rub off the slime and and you got to put them in the cradle like you're almost like pinching that thing and lifting them out of the water right away if, mm. if you just have a really big net, you just let mm -hmm. them sit in there so you can get them in the water. Because a lot of times, by the time you're landing one of those fish, they're already worn out. So they're not going to do too much. So you can just keep it. Sure. A lot of times, like the musky nets, like the one I have is big enough that you can scoop the fish and you can kind of like set the net on the side of the boat. And it's the musky nice. still in the water. Oh. I haven't caught a lot. Because the... Because the like net itself that, <laughs> is so far, like the net itself is so big that it the it dangles far enough away from the aluminum handle, yeah, or yeah, handle or whatever that yep. it still hits the water. Right, exactly. And musky nice. nets aren't necessarily cheap, but you really should try to have the right net for what you're going for. You know, oh, sure. one one size does not fit all for the fish. You got to have a big enough net to handle a musky, and if you have the net big mm -hmm. enough for the musky. The holes are bigger and mm. the smaller mm -hmm. fish will swim not all the way through. Like, I mean, if it's real small, it will, but the smaller fish will like get their head stuck mm -hmm. through that's, and their gill mm -hmm. plates that's what I was gonna are say. there. So their heads will go through, but they don't want to come out easy. I learned this from yeah. experience. Yeah, you have that like <laughs> that reverse like trap thing, right? Like a small yeah. game trap is you can go in, but you can't come back out or like crab pots. I watch a lot of deadliest catch. You can go in, but you can't come out because you can go through one way, but there's that reverse catch that you can't, you can't get out of it. Right. Is that what you're saying? Like, yeah, the head will go one way through the net, but as you try to pull the bass out of the musky net, it's gills will kind of reverse catch on the net and, and you're, yeah, uh, exactly. You're in a bad situation Yep, where it's not too big of a deal, but like in a, you know, in a time like this where you're already trying to minimize the stress, right? like trying to like fold it in and, and bass, like it can happen, but it's more so walleye and Northern for sure. Like we talked about with that slime, sure. they're already sure. lubed up. They just thump. <laughs> <laughs> right through one of those musky holes. <laughs> yeah. Cause I learned that from, you know, when you're musky fishing, you catch pike, it happens. Sure, so, of course. And then you have, you're like, I brought the big net. Well, I guess I'm going to try to net him because sometimes I'll use smaller baits and we'll just have like a leader material and not an actual leader, mm -hmm. hoping that I catch a fish and just, you know, crossing my fingers, it doesn't take the whole thing in its mouth because. Mm -hmm. sometimes the fish is slow and I'm like, well, I'll try to downsize. And then I catch a lot of pike and then the pike, ah. I'm just like, they got sharp teeth and I just try to get them in the net as fast as possible. So I'm not losing my lure. So right. even though they're not that big a pike, I'm not trying to like boat land them or hand land them. I just get them in the net and then they get their heads stuck and you go, shit. 
<laughs> need to bring the small net next time too, I guess. <laughs> right. Sure. 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 Yeah. And it, it all comes back to like the, the drought is like all about minimizing when you're doing this, because I don't, I don't know enough about, you know, musky fishing and stuff like that. But if the loo, if, if the water's warm, the fight is going to make them warmer. And yes. I don't know like what kind of situations, you know, I don't know what kind of situations you're necessarily catching your musky in, but like, are they, where, do, where's their normal temperature? I mean, are they living in the colder, deeper waters or like they're up because they're predator fish? Yeah, they're predator fish. So they're where the other fish are and they're, mm-hmm. they're like the king shit of the lake. So they're kind of right. wherever they want to be. They're shallow sometimes. <laughs> they suspend in the middle of the lake. Sometimes they, oh, they'll be deep okay. in the mm-hmm. weeds. Sometimes it's kind of just depending on the day. So they're yeah. kind of wherever they want to be. So, so yeah. it, 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 it's the same for a lot of different fish. Like they prefer one temperature, but they'll take discomfort over, or they'll take, yeah, they'll take the, discomfort over yeah. not eating. Right. So they'll yep. go where the food is, but the muskies just are, go where the food is. yeah, they're in the shallow. You can find them in the bright sunshine, like roaming the flats, like no weeds at all. Wow. It's like you don't really? see any other fish out there and they're just like uh-huh. going from point A to point B because they're just swimming. Looking for food. It's almost like they're a fisherman too, where they're just right. like, I think the best food's going to be over here today. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, One one thing that I know that we don't know much about, and we probably have to get a guest on for this, but like the 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 shallow waters, like are are good for spear fishing, bow fishing, mm. like rough fish, man. They just they just swim through like nothing. I've, I've just watched enough nature videos where you will see a body of water being created in a grass field. <laughs> Right. Like that was a grassy field and then it rained a ton upstream. Mm-hmm. And now that grassy field is a very, very shallow river. It's running water through a grassy field. Yep. Watch a carp just fucking mm-hmm. right through that shit. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Four inches of water. I got this. <laughs> yep. Fuck, dude. It's yeah. Cool. It's so crazy. So like this is actually probably a, a decent time for rough fish. I would guess you'd go out and get some rough fish. Yeah, yeah. In this sort of situation. Yep. That and that was it. Was the Sock River is the one that I was thinking of before. Oh, and that nice. one, that one would. That's when I would see those fish. I think I talked about it, about it on the podcast before, where they're just like rutting through the stuff. Oh and, yeah, for sure. And that was like when the water was kind of low, and it was never like this before. So I don't know what it would be like that, but yeah, I could sure. stand on the side of the river and just see them like ravaging those weeds <laughs> so, and that's probably that's probably part of it where it was like shallow and they wanted to get to a certain point yeah and they're just swimming their ass off because they're too big right. to like they're partially out of the water at that point almost and they're just like right yeah for real open food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's, the, it's crazy so the weird thing i wanted to say too like when you're out there fishing is that like top water baits work pretty well at this time mm-hmm. because a just like in the summer it works but b it's like when it's shallower water and stuff it's like almost the the bait fish and the food and everything is just kind of like on the surface like mm-hmm. with the different mm-hmm. critters and whatnot of go in mm-hmm. there but the weird thing is too when it rains like after a rain then they're also looking for like top water stuff. Right. So like just when in doubt, top water seems to work. <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah, like you were talking about with the water raises up too, the fish move in way shallow because then they're just looking for stuff to to eat. Mm-hmm. And you can have like how you were talking about where the water goes up, you can have it go up and create like a pond and then like the water recedes and then there's just a pond in the farmer's oh. field that actually has fish in it now <laughs> you can right go fish right those. yeah yeah because that's exactly yeah. it with the rough fish like i said they'll they'll swim wherever the water is yeah i mean yep. that <laughs> they'll, they'll go where the water is and the, the yeah. water the stream they came in on just dries up and it's like oh shit yeah in the <laughs> springtime that happens a lot because of how like the snow melts so you'll right. get 
like yep. crazy amounts of water come in real fast and then go out real fast and it catches some of the fish off guard. Yep. And then they get stranded. So. It makes for good fertilizer, I would assume, because that's 50% right. of what rush fish are used for anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what they push for if you catch them. They're like, if you're So I've been meaning to ask you this for weeks, just generally speaking anyway, on obviously on the podcast because it's content, but I'm just curious. Um, your lake that you fish primarily has been, mm. uh, how do I say, overflowing? <laughs> Flooded. Yeah, dude. Fl- for like two years, it seems like, right? Yeah, yeah. So what has the drought done to that and your fishing? Because, I mean, that's where you do most of your fishing over the yeah. summer, if I'm not mistaken. Right. You are correct. And not a whole lot, man. No it's, shit. Yeah, no, there's still quite a few. I see, I do see a water line. There's one cabin at the end of the road that my parents have their cabin on. Mm-hmm. And there's a water line that's like two feet difference on their door. Wow. But that cabin's still in the water. Holy shit. I know, no right? No kidding. Yeah, some, some people are super fucked. Like, wow. Like, that will never go away. I mean, there would have to be some kind of human intervention to, like, create a river at this point almost. Yeah, that's what they're they're trying to figure out because it's been, like, consistently going up. Like, there's been droughts like this where it drops down, but then it goes up and then it drops down and it goes up and it drops down and it goes up. And But when it goes up, it never drops down to the old drop down point. Nope, it just keeps going up eventually. Like, it just keeps going up and up and up, and they've seen this trend. Mm-hmm. happening mm-hmm. and uh i'll put this one on the powers that be whoever's been paying attention to this stuff those same people are the ones that are coming out and just like uh do you have a permit for raking your sand like you guys maybe want to make sure that the like all these cabins don't get flooded first. <laughs> like there's a lot of property damage that's happening right yeah. now <laughs> just yeah like one one year don't worry the, about the fucking yeah, rake. One year the ice shelf like moves stuff and all of a sudden there's somebody like knocking at the door and they're and I'm just up there like to fish on like a weekday. This was when I had a job where I would get a weekday off a week. Mm-hmm. And and I go up there to fish and they're just like, Hey, we were just wondering about what's all been done up here. And I'm just like, they just raked. I don't know, the neighbors look like they've done different stuff, but I don't know what they did. Like, my parents raked, and they're like, you guys need to get permits for all this. And I was like, we need to get permits to rake? And then they were like, (laughs) all you did was rake? And it's like, I don't know how many times I have to say rake. (laughs) I'm not quite sure what's not getting through here. But then they're just like, "Yeah, no, you don't need permits to rake. And then it's like, that's fantastic. Can I go fishing now, please? Right. You're in my way. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming up here on a Tuesday and talking. Like, you guys know I'm not here to just, like, relax. I don't live here. <laughs> it's a minimum maintenance road. Nobody lives right. here. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to say. It's like they know that it's cabin property, and it's not. We're... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably someone from, like, the association or some shit. It's not a DNR officer just coming up there and being no, like, No, but they had, like, a they had a DNR officer with them. There was an officer, of a lady with a clipboard. And somebody else, and the lady with the clipboard was the Karen that was like, Yeah, we're here, we're here, we're here. You're just like, I am high as fuck right now, Karen. I, I'm not. I just want to go fishing. I well, need I'm to a go, little bit tipsy. I came up and went fishing. I was just thinking about that today. Like, this is completely random off topic, but I was thinking about like how people are just like, we need to get more kids out there fishing because it keeps them off of the drugs. And it's like, yeah, but fishing on drugs is pretty <laughs> fucking cool. <laughs> I can say this in my entire adult life. I've never been drinking without beer. And if you think that's not a drug, then you're fucking high yourself. You never so... <laughs> been, oh, you, you mean you've never been fishing without beer? What did I say? You've never been drinking without beer. Both of those are still true. Both of those. I've never been drinking without beer, and I've never been fishing without fish. So your move, partner. I don't know. (laughs) Oh, shit, man. All right. Well, let's keep the laughs going by cutting over 
into the second half where we are going to talk comedy with our first guest of all time, Sioux Falls Funniest Man, a great dude, a producer, a generally funny guy, a dad, and hopefully I can do that intro that well when it comes to the second half. Yeah. I will now leave you with this bit of information. Did you have some info? No, no. I was just oh. going to let a pregnant pause hang out there for oh. a while and see oh. <laughs> how long I, I could let that go. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I like, I had uh, fair practice use for whatever. We can we can listen to 13 Seconds Free Willy song, right? <laughs> yes. Huh? I think it's only 10 seconds, but... That's enough, Michael. <laughs> That's enough, Michael. <laughs> to the break. <laughs>